Hi, I'm Abba Shapiro, and I'm going to walk you through how to use Luminar Plugin. Luminar Plugin allows you to create beautiful images within a variety of host applications, including Adobe Photoshop CC, Adobe Lightroom Classic, and Adobe Photoshop Elements on both the PC and the Mac. And you can also use it on Apple Photos on the Mac. In addition, Photoshop users have the benefit of using Luminar as a smart object, enabling them to revise edits even after closing the plugin. Plus, you can record custom Photoshop actions that leverage all of Luminar's filters, layers, textures, which is a huge time savings. To get started, download and run the Luminar plugin installer. It will automatically install the Luminar plugin into all available host applications on your computer. For more detailed installation instructions, check out the Luminar installation videos on our website. Once installed, simply launch the host application and start creating. Let's take a look how Luminar plugin works in Adobe Photoshop. Now I've launched Photoshop and opened up a photo and you know, it's a little washed out. So I want to quickly apply one of the Luminar plugin filters. So I'll go to filter. Skylum software and choose a Luminar plugin. And this launches the Luminar plugin interface. And I have a couple of ways that I can process this image. We have one click looks, which allow me to either enhance an image uh, or fix a problem, or I can apply individual filters. And to do that, I would click on the add filter button in the upper right hand corner of the interface. And here I have a variety of filters to choose from. I'm going to choose two very popular filters, the Accent AI filter and the AI Sky Enhancer filter. Now the Accent AI filter allows me with one slider to adjust the tone of the image, recovering my highlights, opening up my shadows, giving me a little more contrast and pop to my image. And I can simply move that to the right and you'll see that the image already improves. Now the next filter I'm going to use is the AI Sky Enhancer filter. And we use machine learning to analyze thousands of images of skies and we can recognize what's cloud, what sky. As a matter of fact, it works from blue hour to blue hour, which means right before sunrise, through sunrise, all the way to the time right after sunset. And with a single slider, I can make my sky really open up and pop. So very quickly, I was able to use two filters and this was my before and this is my after. So I like what it's done. I'm going to simply hit apply and this will return me back to Photoshop with these filters already applied to my image and I'm ready to continue working on the image or I can export it at this point in time. Another way that I can work with Luminar plugin in Photoshop is using what's called a smart object. And I have another image here and I've already turned this into a smart object. And to do that, you can simply right click on that image and you convert that to a smart object. Now, what this will allow me to do is apply the Luminar plugin. And then if I want to come back and make changes, I can, which, which provides me a great amount of flexibility. Let's go ahead, once again, launch the Luminar plugin filter. And this time, instead of applying individual filters, I'm going to try some of the looks. Now, I could go with the AI image enhancer. And when I click on any look, it actually applies several filters to create that look. But all of these filters are adjustable. So I'm not locked in once I choose a look that it's on or off. I can easily blend this look in with the original image. There's a slider down over here to the left. Or if I want to work with any of the individual filters that created that look, I can do that also. So maybe I want a little more vibrance to this image. This look uses the Accent AI filter. So I could either dial that down or dial it up. And I can even add additional filters. I'm going to go ahead and add a vignette and I'll make that a little bit smaller, bring that down and I can even position that vignette 
over here in this part of the image. So we can focus that. So I kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and it will now apply all of these changes to the image and return me back to Photoshop. Now, because this is a smart object, if I change my mind and I did, I really think it's more interesting if I focused my vignette on Audrey Hepburn here. So all I have to do is double click to get stepped back into the Luminar plugin. All of my adjustable filters are here and I can go to the vignette, choose my place center. I'm going to put it over here and this really draws my eye to this side of the image, but I'm not quite done yet. I want to again enhance this so I can add another layer, a new adjustment layer, and maybe I want to put a different look on top of this. So I like the way it's going, but I wonder what happens if I add classic black and white and now I can blend that back in to my image. Kind of nice, but it's very flexible. I don't have to take that. I can bring that all the way back to 100% and maybe try something else. And we have a variety of looks that you can apply to your image in our Luminar Looks collection. What's really cool is I've just switched my collection of looks and I can see a thumbnail of how that look will affect my image even before I click on it. I'm going to try the 60s black and white option and I really like this. It's very kind of grainy and very cool. But if I go over here to the right side, I can still adjust some areas and I'm going to let the saturation of the red come out and lower the grain. So now I have a whole different look to my image. I once again hit apply. I am returned back to Photoshop and I can continue working on this image or again export it as I need to. So the fact that I can use smart objects and have the flexibility of returning to the Luminar plugin interface and modify it is great. Another great feature of Luminar plugin is the ability to record actions which use all the filters and layers and blending modes of Luminar plugin. Now I pre-recorded an action which takes this image opens up Luminar plugin, applies a series of filters to give it a kind of an edgy gritty look. It then returns it back to Photoshop, opens up my watermark, applies that, and my image is quickly ready to where I like it. Let's take a look at how that would work with a single click. I choose style and watermark and I hit the play button. As you can see, it opens up the plugin. It will now apply a series of filters once the filters are applied, it returns me to Photoshop and then applies my watermark in the lower right hand corner. So this was really fast and I didn't have to go through all the steps. Now if I have another image I want to apply the same action to, all I have to do is open it up, select the action and once again hit play. And it's as easy as that to get this stylized look and my watermark with a single click. So I can easily apply a regular filter in Photoshop. I can apply the filter to a smart object so I can go back and change things and create actions so I can do complex tasks very quickly with a single click. Now let's take a look at how Luminar plugin works in Adobe Lightroom Classic. And there's a couple of ways you can work in Lightroom also. First of all, you can select any image and you can process it as you would in Lightroom if you wanted to enhance things in the develop module. If you want to apply any type of Lightroom preset, you can go ahead and do that. Then when you're ready to take it in to Luminar to take advantage of the Luminar plugin filters, it's as simple as right clicking, saying edit in Luminar plugin. And you'll get a choice at this point. If you want to, you can edit a copy with any adjustments you made in Lightroom, or you can edit the original. There'll be different choices depending if you've modified it or not. So let's click the edit button. This will launch Luminar plugin once again. We can make any changes we want. I'm going to try one of the stylistic looks for a portrait. I'll go over here to portrait. And I want something a little bit dreamy. I like that. It gives me a nice soft look and I can modify this if I want. I can say, you know what? 
I see this blue little butterfly there and I'm going to use the HSL slider and change the hue of that blue butterfly. I'll move it more towards the uh, purple stage and I can do that very quickly and I have this nice look. I could adjust things if I wanted to and a great thing that I have with Luminar plugin is the ability to work with layers which is not something I have the availability to do in Lightroom. So they're perfect complements for each other. I really like where this is going but I want to add another adjustment layer to enhance this image. Let's click on the plus, add new adjustment layer. And at this point, I'm going to click on add filter. I want to stylize this a little bit more. I want to add some sharpening to the butterflies to really make them pop. So I'm going to click on sharpening. I'll move that up and I'm going to add a little bit more detail. I'll click on the detail enhancer increase my small details and my medium details. And I like what it's done to the butterflies, but I don't want it so sharp on her face. And here I can use masking. I'm going to click on the brush here, which is to the right of the word adjustment layer. And I can actually paint in the effect of the filters on this layer. So I'm going to just simply paint that in. I'm creating a mask. So her face is staying soft, but the butterflies are getting nice and sharp. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to zoom in and holding down the space bar, I'm going to sharpen the eyelashes here because I want those to really pop. And let's go ahead and zoom back out. And this is the image without that sharpening and with the sharpening. And I really like the way it looks. So once I'm done with working in Luminar plugin, again, I will hit apply and it returns me to my Lightroom catalog and creates a second image right next to the first image with all the enhancements. If I go ahead and hit the G key for gallery, you can see I have the original image here and I have my modified image here. And this is a great workflow. But there's something very unique that I can also do inside of Lightroom. A lot of my images are raw images and I don't want to lose any of the latitude I have by sending this as a TIFF file to my Luminar plugin. This is especially useful in situations where Lightroom can do some very unique things. One of the things that Lightroom can do really well is if I have either a high dynamic range set of bracketed images, it can merge them together, or it can also assemble a panorama. And as a matter of fact, I have a panorama that I assembled. It's all these individual pieces here, but I've merged them together into this nice large combined image. And this is still a DNG file, a digital negative. So I want to retain all that detail and depth in the color space. So instead of sending it as a filter, instead of right clicking and saying, oh, edit in Luminar plugin, which Lightroom would send anything out as a TIFF file, I can do something a little bit different. I'm going to go up under file, plugin extras and choose transfer to Luminar plugin. And this will send the full quality DNG file into Luminar and I can make all the adjustments and get the full latitude of detail and color that I have from the original DNG file. I'll choose AI image enhancer and that's going to start improving this image. And I want to change the color temperature a little bit. I want to warm that up with my slider here. I like what it's done to the sky. I'm going to go ahead and even punch that up a little bit more. And one of the nice things I can do in Luminar is if I like a filter and I want to push it a little bit harder, I can simply right click on it and duplicate it. And now I have two instances of this filter inside of the plugin. I like where this is going. I'm going to add a little bit more detail. We'll go add filter. We'll go to detail enhancer. And I'm going to simply slide up this to bring in a lot of sharpness into my foreground. Now I don't like what it's doing to the sky and all I have to do is switch over here to my mask tool. I'm going to add a gradient mask. and I can draw that right here and as you can see I'm applying this sharpness to the bottom half but not to the top half. I'm going to tweak that a little bit, turn that off. Really happy with this. Let's take a quick look at the before and I can use this as a side by side. That's my before, that's my after. Let's send it back to Lightroom. 
where we can continue to work on it. And I'm going to pull down my highlights just a little bit to really make this a nice, rich image. Luminar plugin is also a great complement to Adobe Photoshop Elements. And Adobe Photoshop Elements is designed to be very simple and user friendly, and so is Luminar plugin. So all I have to do is launch an image inside of Photoshop Elements. And I think I'm going to go ahead and crop this. I, I like this cropping. And now I'm ready to send it to Luminar. I can go up here under Filter, Skylum Software, Luminar Plugin. Once again, I have all these options available to me, but I want to keep it simple. I'm going to go ahead and try some of my looks. I like this AI Image Enhancer, and this will make the image really pop. And I'm going to make it pop a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit more vibrance to the image and add a couple of more filters. I really like the tone filter. It has something called Smart Tone, and if I move that to the right, it allows me to brighten up some of the shadowed areas without affecting my color saturation. So again, another one of our image-aware and artificially intelligent filters. Let's add a vignette to this. And I like the fact that I can create some inner light and position this directly on top of her. So this is great. The image really pops. It's a little bit crooked, so I can go up here to my Develop filter, click on Transform, and then use the Rotate option just to bring that building so it's perfectly horizontal, and I'll scale it up just a little bit. Perfect. The image is great, and all I need to do is hit Apply, and it returns me back to Adobe Photoshop Elements with a nice, bright image that really pops compared to the original image that I had brought in. Finally, let's check out Apple Photos. Working inside Apple Photos is just as easy as with all the other applications. All I need to do is select an image, double click to start editing it, click to the edit mode, and once I'm in the edit mode, I can go to the drop down over here on the right and say open this in Luminar plugin. I'm going to once again use that AI image enhancer. This is great. I really like it. I think I want to bring in a little bit more sharpness. I'm going to add another layer, a new adjustment layer. I'm going to add the super sharp look. And this is going to really make this area pop a little bit too much in the clouds. So all I need to do is select my brush. I'm going to mask out the sharpness in the clouds. All I have to do is paint over that area. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. And when I'm done, I save changes and it returns me back to Apple Photos with the image completely processed. One great thing about this workflow is it is completely non-destructive. So if I change my mind and I want to remove all the things I've done with the Luminar plugin, I can simply click on the Edit button, right-click on the image, and say Revert to Original. And now I'm back to my original image without any of the modifications. Luminar helps photographers of all skill levels create beautiful images in less time. Taking advantage of our artificially intelligent filters and our image aware filters, you can create beautiful images easier than ever.